Coming in at number 34 on our Locked On Senators NHL Draft Rankings, defenseman for the Tri-City Americans, it's Lucas Dragicevic, and he is all offense all the time. Yeah, Ross, it's ironic. We just went from covering Oliver Bonk, who is a very good shutdown defender, to Dragicevic, who his motto is the best defense is a good offense, or at least it should be, because this guy puts up points in a big way with uh, the Tri-City Americans in the WHL in 68 games. He had 15 goals and 60 assists, good for 75 points. EP rated him as the best offensive defenseman in the entire draft. Ooh, the best. Nobody is on the same level as Dragicevic, and, and there's reason for it. Like He's so silky smooth in the offensive zone. How many of his highlights did you see where he's looking one way, and then just pivots and all of a sudden it's on another guy's tape and it's in the back of the net. Like out of his 60 assists, I got to say 40 of them are primary. It just felt like everything, it was off his stick to another guy and it's in the back of the net. Yeah, I would agree. Like that's the thing. He's, he's so creative. Like you don't know what he's going to do. He can set up the give and go and, and keep up and play along with it. He can do a really good job of getting the puck through traffic, getting, allowing tips and rebounds and, he, he's able to deceive opponents, like you mentioned, uh, making it look like he's going to go one way and then totally fooling them and going the other. And the thing with Dragasevich, pardon me, is that he can also do a really good job, which sometimes offensive defensemen struggle with this. Sometimes they're victims of the rush and they use their skating and they want to be a part of transition and that's how they generate offense. But I found with Dragasevich is that he does a good job walking that O-line and quarterbacking a power play. And he's someone that I can really see a team looking at and being like, if they draft him, we just got our PP1 quarterback for the next decade. Six foot one, 190 pounds, plays that prominent right side of the decor. But Pilsy, is it enough to make up for the fact that he is, I'll say it, a liability in his own end? He's all offense. A negative defense, like not even no defense. I, I would probably say it's fair to say it's negative defense. But you guys know I, I have this, this pull where I'm like, okay, sometimes the offensive guys, you just got to let them run. Just open the gate, let them run. And if they, they come back to the pasture and uh, try to defend, cool. If they don't, cool. Because he's so good offensively. I don't want to make him – you like that one, you, eh? You sound like a person who's watched Eric Carlson for 10 years. Uh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, it, Eric Carlson's last season was a perfect reflection of that. But the thing is, I don't want to make him a decent offensive defenseman just to make him uh, – or, sorry. I don't want to make him a decent defensive defenseman just to make him a decent offensive defenseman. Now you just have a decent defenseman, which isn't a bad thing, but you're really taking away from the talent and the ability that this guy has. But Ross, if he's going to play in the pros, which I anticipate he will one day, you got to have some defense. Like there's got to be a little bit there. And right now that is severely lacking. And a big part of it, unfortunately is the skating. This is a guy that is not a great skater and if you can skate better, that's going to just inherently affect your ability to defend better because you can get to spots and better times. You can force guys wide, things like that, right? So I think first things first, you try to get him a better skater because that's going to help his offense as well. But in turn, it's also going to help his defense. Yeah, and someone uh, described, one of the scouts described to Scott Wheeler as clunky feet. That's it's probably not ideal at the, at the National Hockey League level, having clunky feet on the back end. Like we see some forwards get away with it because they have elite stick, elite hockey sense. But as a, yeah, as a defenseman who you need him to be able to at least, like even if he's not going to defend well, you need him to be able to get back on defense and not be a turnstile okay. at the offensive blue line and just giving up odd man rushes all the time. Yeah, and, and that's just the issue, right? Like in the WHL, if you're that talented offensively, you can get away with that, but – moving ahead to the AHL and eventually NHL, you're going to end up on a bottom pair and you're just, you're going to be stuck on the bench until your team gets a man advantage. And that's not ideal. The contrast between him and Oliver Bonk, I think is, is perfect. Yeah. And Yang, like they would make a great partnership. Hey, eh, if they played on yeah. the same team. That's, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, both of them are, are uh, right shots, but yeah, it could work out. Yeah. This guy's giving me huge, 
Kevin Korchinski vibes from last year where Korchinski went seventh. This guy's nowhere near it. And it's all because Korchinski's an elite skater as well. Yes. Like, that's the one thing. But in terms of their play inside the offensive blue line, that's their that's their canvas and their artists in there. But in their own zone, they may as well be putting on skates for the first time sometimes. The decision-making of like where to be and giving up open, easy tap-ins back door, like it's it's raw talent So uh, on the offensive side. So I think that, one, Lucas Dragicevic is going to play in the AHL. I do not see a world where he comes right out of junior and yeah, is fair. trusted by an NHL coach to play. But I also see a world where if he goes into the right system and you're patient with him, this guy could, could have a ton of of rewards in terms of being a 50 point defenseman in the NHL. Yeah, I agree. Ross. I, I think this is a bit of a risky pick and I think some teams will just straight up avoid him just because like you mentioned, it's a lot of work. And even if you have the right development mental path in place, it doesn't always play out. It doesn't always work out. Unfortunately. Um, we should mention though, tri city was brutal this year. Yeah, well, and that's another thing, right? And again, well, let's go back to the Carlson uh, comparison. He played on a San Jose Sharks team that was, they weren't even thinking about the P word. Like it was just, hey, let's give fans something to clap about here. And Eric Carlson certainly did that. And he didn't care about defense and he put up a monster season points wise. So that's definitely something to take into consideration here. But I really see him as being a second round draft pick. I think if teams are selecting a defenseman in the first round, they're going to go with guys that have a more round, a well-rounded game. And I, I even think Oliver Bonk will be selected ahead of him. And I think that we're right before the draft, by the way, we're going to put out like our top forward list, our top defensive list, and we're going to break it down a little bit like that. It'll be nice to see uh, a bit of a kind of a gap between each guy at their own position. One thing I like about Dragicevic is that he went to the world under 18s and Canada got dummied in game one they lost eight nothing to sweden and dragicevich was dash five in that game it could be easy to to have it affect your confidence right and just be like wow like that that was tough played 18 <laughs> minutes and was dash five Whew. what does he do in his next four games he gets a point in each of the four games he's nice. a, he's got like 15 shots on goal plays over 20 minutes in all the games was worth the price of admission basically on his own they won the bronze medal game uh, four three over Slovakia. He played thirty two and a half minutes. So Ooh. clearly, he was able to get the trust of his coach at that level. But what's it going to translate to at the next level? He has to go back to junior for it. Obviously, has to go back next year, even the year after. I think that's the best spot for him to be. But beyond that, it's it's man, it's patience with Dragic Savage. I really think it is. That uh, BC kid, like I think, like if he could make it to like does Vancouver. I, the Canucks suck with keeping their own picks, but like, I feel like in the second round, like that could be a nice little spot for, they don't have a second round or damn, I wanted to hit my hometown uh, bus there, but nope. I don't know. Uh, he would, he would be very out of the defense and that we've covered. He would be last right now. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. Yeah. Right. Which is where he's at. Yeah. But there's, there's also some upside, which you, so. you can't ignore. And just like full disclosure, we don't have another defenseman until 42 and we're at 32 right now. So there, this might be the end of a tier. With the Oliver Bonks, the Tanner Molen Dykes, the Mikhail Gulyayevs as well. And um, that's probably the second tier, right? And then your top tier is your your Will Ander, your Simashev, your Sandine Palika, and um, and David Reinbacker would be kind of that one tier. So I'd say he's towards the bottom of the second tier. But again, people love right shot defensemen. They love 6-2 defensemen. Someone could fall in love with him and take him a little earlier. But to me, I'm going to put the high end at 40. If he goes before 40, I might say, there's, there's some talent on the table here. But if he goes 40 or below, I'll say that's a, a very justifiable swing. Yep. Yeah, I think that's fair. For more on Lewis, Lucas Dragicevic, make sure you check out Locked On Senators on YouTube. 70 plus draft profiles available for you there. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team, every single day. <laughs>